So I'm getting introduced to other spiritual people. I'm meeting new spiritual, I'm like on campus and they're telling me, oh, this is what I believe and I believe in this. And I'm like, oh, we go soft. I was heavily influenced by this one YouTuber. Uh, I'm gonna say his name because get away from him. <laughs> okay, well, whatever, do whatever you wanna do. If you believe what he believes in, go ahead. I'm not gonna tell nobody what to do. But I, I know I need to stay away from that man. But uh, what's his name? Vaughn Two Cut. Vaughn Two Cut. I was watching his conspiracy theories, and he was saying conspiracy some theories that I never heard ever in my life. Like everybody heard the 9/11, everybody heard the Mandela effect. This man was talking about Tupac. This man was talking about like st like stuff I never heard. His, his 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 video is still up. It's like four hours long, and I watched all four hours of it because that was brilliant. I'm not. I, I still won't. I'm still give him credit for that video because he exposed a lot of stuff in that video. But the thing is, the, but the fact that the video is still up is a red flag because there is no way you're saying all that information and the government doesn't take that down. Since he caught my attention with that video, I started watching his other videos. And in his other videos, he's talking about his beliefs. And his beliefs wasn't matching up with what I believed in. But like I said, spirituality is broad. And I started believing in what he was saying. I started believing in what he was saying because I was new to the spiritual community. So I'm looking at all this stuff like, oh, so... Every spiritual person must believe it. And I claim to be spiritual. Because I, this I recently, yeah, during this time when I was on campus, I stopped um, saying that I was Christian. I started to say I'm spiritual. I stopped claiming myself as Christian only because other people were telling me that I can't say I'm Christian and also believe in astrology and all these other things, which is far from the truth. Because based on what I believe in, I believe God is in everything and he's connected to everything, which I couldn't voice at that time because I was still, you know, learning about what I truly believed in. Um, so me saying I'm spiritual and not understanding that being spiritual is such is so broad. I'm I'm like, OK, so I have to believe this, too. And so he was saying, oh, if you pray to God, stop praying to God. Pray to yourself because you're the real one that's doing all this. Like he's saying it's only one. It's like God. He's basically saying you're God and everything else around you is fake. Basically, that's what he's saying. Everything else around you is fake. God created the world because cause he was bored. And we're all one conscious in different bodies because we're bored that's what he was doing and oh my gosh girl and basically saying we have no purpose and all this stuff and um i wasn't rocking with it i wasn't rocking with it because girl so you mean to tell me my mother my father my best friends my fat my grandma my, my aunt so you mean to tell me All these people have no meaning. You mean to tell me they have no meaning? You mean to tell me they have no meaning, no purpose? You mean to tell me I have no meaning, no purpose? That's what you're trying to tell me? Oh my gosh, I was depressed, depressed, depressed. I actually felt what it was like to be depressed. I never been depressed in my entire life. I was depressed for like a good week or two weeks. Yeah, that's not a long time, and I'm I'm actually so thankful that it was not a long time that I did not feel that feeling that long, because and and ever since I had that feeling, I salute the pe people that deal with depression because oh my gosh, y'all are so strong, so strong, so strong, and y'all deserve the entire world. Literally, because that feeling was terrible. Like, it wasn't even a feeling. I just felt empty. I felt numb. Like, I wasn't feeling anything. That was so, like, the weirdest feeling I ever had. And I felt so lost and so empty. It was terrible. 
But yeah, for those people that are depressed and they are constantly, constantly have that feeling, I love y'all. Y'all, I have so much respect for y'all. So mad respect. Mad respect. And y'all can hit me up whenever y'all want to. Like, I'm, bruh, I'm here for anybody. This is what I'm making. This YouTube channel I got going on right now, I am open to helping anybody, talking to anybody. You want to vent, you can text me. You got my Instagram. I'm not playing, like, because I'm here to serve y'all. Because I have a lot of love to give, and I want to give that love to people that deserve it. And y'all deserve it. For real. For real. For real. Because, girl, I was, it was only one week, two weeks, I was feeling terrible. So, I didn't know what was going on with me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Lord have mercy. And I mean that with my heart. This is why I love God so much and I appreciate God so much. Because, like, you have to go really, 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 really low to appreciate and love God even more. I remember um, when I was dealing with this. Every time I would go back to my dorm, my heart immediately just broke. Like, once I got into that dorm room, I felt empty. Because I wasn't having, like, any distractions from, like, how I was feeling. It was so quiet in there. It was just so unsettling. It was unsettling being in that dorm room alone. And usually, I love, girl, I'm alone right now. Girl, I love being by myself in my room, girl. And, like, I had these pictures on the wall. And I'm going to show you. The pictures back here, those were in my dorm room. I had those pictures on, my, on the wall in my dorm room. And, and there's this one picture of me and my mom. Uh, it's a picture of me when I was, like, three or four years old when she was holding me up and oh my gosh every time I looked at that picture and I, I get emotional talking about it because it's just so powerful and that's why I will never leave God's side ever again I really won't I really won't no one and nothing could ever sway me away from him every time I looked at that picture it, it kept on telling me Noel, you got to go home. Go home. Something was telling me, go home. You have to go home. You have to go home. You can't stay here. You have to go home. Before going, before I went home, because girl, I sure, <laughs> I sure went home. I went to D.C. with my friends at the time. The, you know, the group of friends I was hanging out with last year. And like, um, I we I dealt with like a little, it was like some some uh someone on drugs. He was chasing us down the street, but um that triggered me in a really bad way. And that's not just because of what I was dealing with during the time. Um, it was it was it's also because I, I still it still would have triggered me to this day because um I'm highly sensitive. Um, if you don't know what that means, um, highly sensitive people do exist, and it's actually like a trait in people and it's like 20 percent of the population have it i don't know if that's the u.s population the world population whatever but i'm highly sensitive so certain disturbances and certain events certain situations actually disturb me more than it would the average person like it's like a nervous system thing look it up anyway so but it really triggered me, so I was really negative that entire day. And I, and if anyone, <laughs> the people I was hanging out with, if I really, I know I made the energy really bad that day, but I apologize. Um, I apologize for that, y'all. <laughs> but, um, so yeah. Um, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, um... The church I go to, and I, I wear my necklace all the time. This is my church's necklace. Um, the church I go to is nationwide. But I'm in D.C. Excuse me. I'm in D.C. <laughs> and, like, one of the girls was like, oh, I want to go to Insomnia Cookies, da-da-da. <laughs> so we go to Insomnia Cookies. 
And, and like, while we're waiting for her outside, I look across the street and there was my church. Girl, I still have that picture in my phone to this day. I took a picture of it. Girl, I knew that was my sign, girl. Like, because I was already really unsettled and that was God literally telling me, you're okay, I'm watching over you. That's like, you're okay, I'm watching over you. Because that's not a coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidences. And um, ever since I saw my church, I was like, I'm okay. I know I'm okay. And this is also during that time I was going through this. So I knew God was watching over me during that entire thing. And after that, I went straight home. I went straight home after that. When I went home, I recharged. I felt so back. Like, I felt like myself again. I felt like myself again. I felt the love again. I was surrounded by pure, unconditional love from God and my parents. And being around my best friend, being around my family members, it just... I was so, so happy. I was happy again. And that's when, of course, I start praying again. I, was, I, I asked God, please forgive me for leaving you. Well, almost leaving you. Like, oh my gosh. Please forgive me for almost leaving you. I will never leave you again. Because he was there for me. Like, I was getting spiritually attacked. That's the, the most powerful experience I had in a long time. There was other the two other experiences I had, but that's for another video if y'all want to hear that. But, um, so what I, and I never went back to campus either. I never went back to campus because it was just, that room has so much negative energy in it. I'm not going to lie. Like, that that room, like since since I was filling my head with all those thoughts and that energy is left in that room, so I was just like, I just did not want to come back. I said I need to, I'm, uh, 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 I'm packing all my stuff and I'm coming back home. So I came back home like two weeks earlier than I was supposed to come back home. Having a ball, I was having a ball back home, and we was talking to these two boys, like you know, me and her as best friends, and then the two boys we was talking to as best friends. Girl, we was having a ball. I don't care. We was having a ball. We was going to Six Flags, going to the mall. We was hot boxing. Girl, we was having, oh my gosh, that was so fun. Now, this is now October of last year. Now, I'm not sure if y'all noticed this, but I definitely noticed that it's a theme that every October I either lose a relationship or I start a relationship. October 2017, I lost a, I lost my boyfriend. October 2018, I lost a boyfriend. And October 2020, I gained, like, a relationship. <laughs> so, yeah, a year ago now, still during this time, October, even though I wasn't feeling depressed anymore, I know I was spiritually attacked. I know for a fact I was spiritually attacked during that moment when I was feeling depressed. That was a spiritual attack. And, like, the guy I was actually talking to, he was, um, he's Christian. And, like, uh, was he helpful? No. He would bash me and <laughs> and tell me, oh, you don't believe in God? Mm, you're not supposed to be in that tarot cards. You're not supposed to believe in astrology. He wasn't too supportive about um, what was going on at the time. And he was very aware of what was going on at the time. Because he started talking to me while I was going through what I was going through. While I was being, while I was depressed. Um, but uh, I was getting better. I was getting better. and But I was still very vulnerable. Yes, I was speaking to God. But I was still very vulnerable. Because, you know, I was still filling myself back up. You know? I was doing meditations. And one night I did this meditation to, I think it was... I forgot what the frequency was. I think it was the highest frequency, 928, I believe. Whatever the highest frequency was, that's what I listened to. And girl, 
that was like one of the most crazy experiences I had spiritually. Um, I actually heard God talking to me. Like, like you guys, when I pray, I feel God. I feel his presence, but I don't hear him talking. This time, I heard him talking. I heard this voice, but it was telling me, oh, Noel, I love you. I love you. It is okay, and I love you, and I'm always here for you. I, I forgot exactly what he was saying, but he was talking to me, girl. He was talking to me, and I was crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. And it was tears of joy. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I was just like, ever since then, I got right back on my feet, girl. I got right back on my feet after that. Now, fast forward to months and months later, 10 months later, which was now four months ago, three months ago. Um, the guy that I was talking to, I was talking to him from what? September 2020 to like, to June 2021. Yeah. So, with him, I learned a lot about my, like, I mean, I learned a lot about myself because of him. And I'm pretty sure he learned a lot about himself because of me. This relationship that I recently just got out of, and I'm still working through it. Like, I'm still healing from this connection because this relationship was the most toxic situation I've ever been in and you would think oh wasn't the sociopath no because it was mostly him being toxic this relationship it was both of us being toxic <laughs> it was both of us being toxic it was the most toxic relationship but the most intimate relationship I've ever been in in my life in my life so far and I'm still healing from the connection because that's how strong and deep the connection was. Um, and this was like, what, four months ago I stopped, but we decided to not talk, like be exclusive. Um, with this relationship, and I may get emotional about it because I'm just as recent. Um, um, I always knew I was very emotional, over emotional. I always knew that about myself. But I didn't think it was a problem until I met him. He is a cancer. So you already know about them. <laughs> he was more, if, if he isn't as emotional as me, he's more emotional than me. And, but the thing about him was he wouldn't show his emotions. He would suppress it. But his feelings were so strong. Like, it was stupid strong. Probably stronger than my own, bruh. So, through him, he was like a mirror for me. We were both mirrors for each other. So, that's why I learned a lot. I learned through him more than anybody else. Like, because of him. And that's why I'm so thankful for the experience that I had. Because he, like, out of the two... Um, significant relationship I had he really opened me up like oh like really had me go like wow this is the solution to my problems like literally so thank you for that if you're even watching this all right so a portion of this video I'm going to do a voiceover only because this was a very recent relationship I just got out of so I began to ramble about things that I don't think were important or significant to the whole base of the video which was my spiritual journey I started just talk about the relationship in general and so I have a sound on a breath <laughs> but yeah so basically what I learned from the relationship um I really looked within myself. He forced me to look within myself. And um, there were times that we had arguments where he would point out uh, my inconsistencies. And, you know, 
at the time, I was more like, you know, it hurt me. And I'm like, why are you saying this? Why are you doing it? Da, 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 da. But at the end of the day, after the relationship was said and done, I look back at those arguments. I Like, you know, when you're done with a relationship, you reflect on things. And I reflected the, as a, at the... Mm, I reflected on the relationship as a whole. And I'm like, wow, like I really do need to fix these things about myself because that is true. And so that's what I'm working towards now. Um, The things that he pointed out was how I was inconsistent with um, just like how. Okay, for example, you know how I told you earlier that I felt undeserving of love and all that. And because, since I felt undeserving of love, I would tolerate any and everything because I was so desperate to get that love. And now I really look within myself and I'm like, well, I did ha- I did love myself at this point, but I didn't love myself to the point where I wouldn't tolerate certain things. And I tolerated way more things that I should have and even included in that relationship. He was better than other people, way better than other people, but he was still the bare minimum. I know that I deserve more than bare minimum now, and that's that. My standards are high now. I don't tolerate stupidity anymore. Like, I'm setting myself up, and I'm taking care of myself and prioritizing myself like I should have been doing the entire time, and that is how... You do things. That's how you do things. Because and I love being in love. I love relationships. I'm so nurturing. I'm so caring and loving. I love to give love. That's a part of how I am. And But the thing is, I cannot just give my love to everyone because my love is precious. It is precious and it is valuable and it is not for everybody. Which is why... I got hurt so many times in my life because I was giving love to people that didn't appreciate it, people that didn't want it, or, you know, just didn't deserve it, all around didn't deserve it. So now I'm putting all that love into myself so that one day, and it's not even just, the goal isn't even to do all this to get somebody it's what I should have been doing for myself anyway. It's it's this is I deserve this for myself, you know. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but the thing is, once I put all that love into myself, when the time comes in divine timing, when God wants someone to be in my life, He will put somebody in my life that is for me. And that is ready to be loved. And that is going to be accepting of that love. And right now I'm just being patient and continuing to put that love into myself. And I'm not going to give all credit to the last relationship because I did learn valuable lessons in my previous ones as well. But this relationship forced me to do this. It forced me. And I hope and I pray that the relationship helped him as well as as much as it's helped me. Yeah. All right, y'all. This is present time Noel. Okay. So I didn't get to end off that video correct the w- the way I wanted to because my storage ran out. And excuse me, my storage ran out. So I basically explained everything. Um, but I'ma just say the summary. Basically, every year, I just had, like, a a spiritual awakening. It was, and it was just became stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's, like, with my relationships, my, um, because that is, like, my struggle was always relationships, uh, romantic relationships. And so, each time I was sent somebody, it was to show me, hey, this is what you need to work on. And da da da. And that last one, the last relationship I just got out of, was the last one, and I know it was the last one, because I didn't learn my lesson. I didn't learn my lesson. That, um, I learned some things the first couple times, 
But I didn't learn the full lesson of, hey, you are deserving of love. You do deserve these things. You do deserve to be treated like, like, you know, because everybody, every single person is literally love. We are loving energy. And we just have to tap into that. Um, and so now that I understand that, girl, I can't attract anything but love because I am love. So thank y'all for watching my YouTube video. I know it was like three parts, but if you watched it, I love you so much. And I mean that because, girl, you did not have to watch all that. But I really hope that I was able to inspire other people or help other people and guide other people because that's why I am this is the my whole purpose of my YouTube channel now um I probably will still make hair videos and stuff but mostly I want to make spiritual videos because I want to help people and I want people to be happy I want everybody to be happy and we're all gonna have these high vibrations I am not just gonna Take all the loving energy. I'm going to throw it around. I'm going to give y'all the... Y'all going to catch this energy, too. So, yeah. All right. Well, good night. And thank you. Well, or good whatever time. It's, it's, it's nighttime for me. But I love y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me. And I'll see you in the next video.